Hello everybody, it's Lucy Matt Haven here today, and well, we're going to be taking a look at the T22 Medium. With the most recent patch that was brought into the game, um, this tank has now become viable. While wow, back when it first came out, uh, yeah, it, it was, its DPM was abysmal. I think with the best crew I had on this tank, I had like a 7.9 second reload. And with 320 alpha going up against some tier 10 heavy tanks, some of the heavy tanks were just out trading you without much of a problem just because they had a seven second reload or they had a 6.8 second reload and it just really played against you quite the amount but other than that hi welcome to my channel i'm just being a potato or muppet today that's literally how 90 percent of my gameplay is gone so I'm, I'm not really worried about it it, it happens it happens all right, well, jumping into it, here we go. This T22 Medium, the reason why this tank is so, like, uh, I was super excited whenever I heard that they're going to be buffing the reload from, you know what, I actually can't remember. All right, so we got from 9.4 to 7.6. That's actually a decent buff right there. They also introduced a new Italian heavy tanks. Honestly, um, I'm sorry for anyone who decided to spend money to get to the Rosarante right away just because... 21 second reload on your last shell for 490 alpha don't get me wrong it's got a three shot clip but you see they already made a mistake with the t22 medium with the reload and who knows in six months seven months they're gonna look back at all three of these tanks well actually not the uh, the the p88 is not doing too bad but the the mod 54 the mod 66 and the russell Ronte, here in a couple of months their reloads more than likely might get buffed along with a little bit of the gun handling but I haven't really been hearing too much good about them as of right now. Well, jumping into probably the best thing that they've done in a while was a little bit of balancing changes. Changes. Ch changes. Yeah, the English today is out the window. But T22 Medium, one of the biggest advantages of this tank, it's one of the best reverse side scraping tanks in the game. Being able to get your gun all the way on the wrong side of the turret like I just did. And maintain, let's say, 2.7 degrees. If you're on flat land, side scraping all across, this tank is just extremely hard to counteract. Now, if you want to kill the T22 medium, uh, premium APCR rounds will not work. AP rounds will not work at this angle. You're going to want to load the heat. The second you load the heat, it's just going to hit the armor, try to go through it. The only way to ricochet a heat round is 85 degrees of angle. And even then, 85 degrees is almost like you're driving flat onto the target to try and block a shell. Other than that, yeah, this thing is basically anti-premium. At least it feels that way when we are playing it. But same time, you know, premium shells, they will find their way through. Just because you load the premium, everything gets easier. However, the standard rounds in this tank, they are fast. They are ridiculously fast. Speaking of which, I actually don't even remember what they were. Uh, okay, so 1,535, not 100% sure that's right on the console at 1535 as my brain is going smooth. Yeah, 1535 and then 900 on your premium. Respect to the 3D model. You know, raising your gun just a tad bit, so driving up a hill, want to scout out. It, this armor is absolutely fantastic. You got 80 millimeters of side armor. Your top armor in the front, we're looking at about 100 millimeters all around. Your lower plate's also 100 millimeters. Your turret armor, it's not too bad, you know. 240, 260, but honestly, it's a Russian turret. So, really, the thickness doesn't matter too much. You know, the front cheeks up in the front, like, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Just load the premium. You'll go through those. You guys can totally tell. Today is uh, me being just me. I I'm just having fun screwing around. But who knows with the standard standard rounds with the uh, most recent 6.0 update. I'd, you could probably go through the front cheeks of this tank with standards, knowing how they did all that. Now, T22 Medium, here's the console. Here we go. Finally, get to jump into some fun stuff. 7.89 rounds per minute, and everything just went blue. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Mm. Yes. Yes. By the way, never buy a baby blue shirt. Baby puke. Like a year ago. Yep. I have no problem with this. Okay, all right, 264 standard pin, 330 heat pin. Combined with that, where you're going to be looking at 
damage 320 and your high explosives at 420 honestly you know i always recommend to load a couple of he shells it doesn't matter what tier you're playing i on t22 medium i'm loading in three of them because to me it it just helps out a lot to have that extra little bit combined with that 18.06 power to weight 650 horsepower overall 55 traverse speed and top top reverse speed is 20 kilometers honestly this thing feels fast it feels really fast um, one of the biggest problems I have inside the T22 medium is actually the positioning of the ammo rack just because I have been ammo racked inside this multiple times with standard shells or high explosives splashing the sides because the entire V on the bottom that's your ammo rack so be a little bit careful and cautious if you guys do have this tank and you want to pull it out aim time 2.2 seconds 50 round ammo capacity 0.36 gun dispersion uh, five degrees of gun depression. Don't don't even try to fight in a ridge line. This thing is not going to handle it. Along with that, 16 degrees of elevation. It, it's enough to get the job done. Honestly, the T22 medium getting it into position. You know the your elevations and everything else. They're going to be lackluster. But the trade off is you have got insanely good armor combined with really good top speed, decent traverse speed on the tracks, 400 meters of view range. And then along with that, turret armor 230 overall. But as you guys saw, 268 was the thickest on the cheeks and the front, and the rest became red auto ricochet, super hard to pin. Even against gold rounds, this tank's going to stand up really well. Um, Yeah, traverse speed. Here we go, traverse speed. All right, so this is actually traverse speed of the turret, dude. Uh, you, you, don't even worry about it. It's just one of those days. It doesn't matter if I restart the recording or not. It's over. It's gone. I'm not worried about editing or anything else. I'm just going to full send it and just be like, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, signal range, 850. It's going to be a, amazing with that assist. So, yeah, other than that, um, top armor kind of sucks in the rear, 30 millimeters. But then what's really nice is you got 40 millimeters, which honestly up in the front, up against 120 millimeter rounds, you're going to be able to block those. So 121, you hit this as a 122. 122 is going to be overmatching your top armor, so just keep that in mind whenever you're playing the tank. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm going to disappear. I'm a little bit red like a lobster. But overall, T22 medium, its ammo rack positioning does kind of suck a tad bit. The overall statistics of the vehicle, they, they look decent. They're not bad. And with the right crew loadout, you can get your traverse speed up, you can get your hollow rotation speed up, your power to weight can be handled a lot better. Like right now, I'm running a 0.24 dispersion values on my gun. And honestly, not much of an issue. Module damage, this is something simple, small, it's 135, but it's always nice to know what the module damage is, because module damage does make a big difference inside the fight. <laughs> Knowing that you can essentially put one shell into a track and it's going to damage the track, then the second shell is going to break it. However, 120 millimeters, those shells more than likely are going to be breaking the tracks and locking down the opponents a lot more. So do keep that in mind if you're going to be playing this and aiming at tracks. With the most recent buff to the tank giving it a 5.6 second reload, and with your premium consumable active making it into a 5.3, it's starting to feel really nice. Now, there was an update that was dropped into the game this Tuesday that I can't seem to find the fixes that they actually applied. Just because there is a new statistic popping up for view range and everything else. So, premium consumable is adding 3 meters to my base view range for that effective. So, it's a little bit of an increase. It's not too much, but it's it's there. Now, I'm, I can't seem to find where the extra view range is coming from because situational awareness is affecting your view range and it was affecting it beforehand. Beforehand, we had, what was it, 466 with 400 meters of base view range. But now it's saying that it's 470, the extra four meters. It, it just, it's weird to see that the uh, premium consumable is finally added to the uh, overall view range and it's also affecting your still concealment as well. So you guys have a little bit of a better view of your statistics inside the garage now, and it's getting a lot easier. Now, right here, this is showing off the armor of the T22 medium as I kick uh, some stuff. You know, just just so much fun today. Today was so much fun. The Muppet re inside the matches was unbelievable. I wasn't even playing right. I just literally drove out in the open. I'm like, yes, this is how we play. 
So already up to 1,150 ricochet, 317 assisted, 1,182 dealt. Along with that, even though the teammate rammed me, I wasn't really angry about it because I knew at that angle I still had to auto ricochet as long as they're not firing off heat. Now, the MX-30 did think about it. He is now loading the heat rounds against us. He is going through with every single shot. So, I'm going to want to try and get a little bit of a deeper angle against that MX-30 the next time he pulls out. But knowing that right here he's probably trying to auto lock everything else leopard one comes over auto locks puts a shell straight into the track same thing about the is4 coming around honestly the side armor of this tank it is extremely trolly and you guys need to know how to kill this whenever it's coming around a corner like that aim at the highest part or aim at the top armor there's the flat spot on the sides that you can hit that's only 80 millimeters or 90 millimeters and that's going to be extremely easy to go through just to try and help get it to where you guys can try to take this tank down without much of a problem. It's 80 millimeters. I just looked it up. I'm looking at it right now. The entire rear of the tank as well is also 80 millimeters, making this extremely difficult to pin in the rear with high explosives. Honestly, the tank is kind of anti-HE, depending on what HE shell you're going up against. And Leopard 1 deciding to pull around. We're going to pull up, pull back, go forward, and look at that. Straight into the tracks again with no damage dealt to us. A Projecto 65 putting shells into our side. We're just going to lock him down and keep him there for the team to take him down. Now Leopard 1 comes around and we see blue shell fly out. So right here we just want to pull around and say hello. How are you today? Up to 2,370 ricochet along with 3,017 dealt. 4,005 firing off and pulling off a decent snapshot there. I completely forgot about that shot. <laughs> it happened though. <laughs> now, how this tank fills, beforehand with the abysmal reload, this tank could barely hold a corner. Uh, a lot of people just pushed up and had no problem pushing up on you, making it extremely difficult to really counteract what was going on and now swapping over to the high explosives we're gonna get a 390 out of that shot right there you know just as i said it's always nice to carry a couple of he shells just because you don't know what enemies are going to be ending up against you don't know if that high explosive is going to be the extra dpm you need to take down a target or if it's just going to help try and get a better shot in the tracks or if you're trying to you know take down a pesky little light tank and you want to try and guarantee a tracking shot and deal some damage now the T22 medium, how it fills inside the matchmaking, the armor on it, it it's not broken. It, it's definitely not broken. As you guys can see, if people load the heat rounds against you and with everything else that's going on, a lot of people like to load the heat rounds, so primarily I do get hit with them a lot whenever I'm playing inside this tank. Then again, when am I not getting hit by premium HE or no, not, not premium, yeah, pre premium Hesh, Hesh specifically from the 4005 and the uh, Death Star, definitely. Along with that, oh, speaking of HE, artillery still exists. They hurt like no other. Um, I did have a match inside this tank that did make me a little bit sad. And it, it, it was just a little bit sad. I'll actually bring that up real fast after this one's uh, going through the scoreboard. But honestly, a match like this is absolutely fantastic. 5,420 damage dealt, 3,090 blocked. Along with that, 1,013 assisted, 4 destroyed, mastery badge com combined with a still wall medal inside of a medium tank. And yeah, literally this is just one of those tanks that you get it in the right position, it's extremely hard to take down. Now, talking about the ammo rack and the positioning of the ammo rack, taking a look at the health we have left. 1,774 out of 1,900 hit points, we're coming up, you know, we're just kind of on a little bit of a roll here it's only been three minutes into the match and we've already dominated the left side because not a lot of guys went there you know it was a super conk an e5 a couple others nothing too crazy utilizing the armor the best we can right here and next thing you know we're getting shot by a 53 55 with an ap shell going straight through the side with almost pinpoint accuracy honestly i don't know about you guys but i do feel as in Artillery needs a little bit of a rework. Their consistent accuracy is getting on my nerves. And it's another reason why I haven't been 
playing as much as I normally have been. Usually I'm putting about 1,200 to 1,000 matches a month in the game, but as of recent, I've only been investing around 600 to 500 matches, so it's been cut in half by a, quite the amount. Just because I'm not a big fan of getting hit by artillery, it's not fun. And, you know, I've got lots of recordings of me getting one shot by artillery, more than I can count by this point. Uh, yeah, it's just not that much fun. T22 medium though overall this tank with the most recent buff that it had on its reload it felt like it was time to kick back and say hey you guys if you have this tank get ready to start pulling it out and having some fun because it's finally in the meta it's ready to be used basically this tank when they first released it was lackluster to say the least it's it was lacking extremely in the DPM department combined with that it just, it was missing out on a lot that it could have had. And the fact that they brought it in the game at that state, and then they said that this is how the super testings went, and they felt like this would be the best way to design it and make it. To me, I don't know what super testers were testing it, or where they got their data originally from, but seeing that they updated the tank, their data was wrong. And... You gotta think the way the PC's put together. PC has got a larger player base, and a lot of statistics on the tanks on PC are made to be balanced. They have a larger player base. They have people who say, this is ridiculously overpowered. Not just that, if you have a tank that has a really specific thing that it's able to do, and it does it well, why take that benefit away from that tank? For instance, taking away a tank's haul down capability, or taking away a tank's ability to side scrape correctly or essentially absolutely massacring its DPM by increasing its base reload by almost four seconds which is what this tank had this tank has gone through three buffs three reload buffs specifically and each time they've buffed the reload it only made it a little bit better because the first one they did I believe it was only in the range of like one and a half seconds to see if that would increase it at all and help it out but as you guys see now they found out no it did not I, I, I just think it's a little bit comical but it, it is what it is you know if they want to say that at this moment it's broken we don't want it like this then allow them to do it because well we're world thanks players we're console players specifically console players we are used to this kind of stuff. We're used to sitting down for like a couple of months waiting for something to get fixed. Honestly, look at a lot of other games that are coming out as of now. They're coming out broken or with a massive amount of glitches and a lot of problems. Honestly, in my opinion, I don't care for graphics. I care about the gameplay. And whenever you see a something new come out and they're all like, oh, it's got way good graphics and then you could log on to it. Sure, you got to pretty scenery but whenever you decide to use your sword to try and strike something you actually hit behind you and stab yourself in the back because of a bug so lots of things that go on overall t22 medium with the most recent buff this this tank is absolutely fantastic now you guys are you know still here and you haven't disappeared on me because of my muppet ray um i haven't been uploading a whole lot and i know that but I've been consistent. I've been at least doing one video a week. I would like to do two or three, but the thing is, is that trying to find that content that you want to try and pump out, it's difficult. Just because I, I, I hit this point where I really don't know what I want to do. You know, it's, it's like, I guess I can say I feel uncomfortable, but at the same time, I know that could be off. Now, in this position here, yeah, we had Super Conk bouncing off of our side armor because he just doesn't know what to do, and now he just gave up. Kind of funny. Oh, nope, 4,005. Hesh around to the side, and, well, he didn't go through. But, it is what it is. I seriously don't know what to do. I just do tank reviews. I, I used to do, like, a match of the week thing, but I only did it a couple of times. And yeah, I, honestly, I've, I've hit a wall. I've hit a wall. You know, you can expect content out of my channel whenever <laughs> there's new tanks. But <laughs> whenever the new tanks come out and they're absolutely horrid, um, <laughs> I, I guess I, I want to wait to do the Rosalante and all the others just because they're 
pretty bad right now. And I mean, they're they're pretty bad. The Rosaronte, with its 21 second reload, actually has worse DPM than the VK 7201K tier 10 German Premium. And there you guys go, Hesh rounds with the ammo rack. I experienced that a couple of times today as well. That was uh, not too much fun. But it happens, you know. It's it's a way to counteract this tank. Just throw high explosives underneath the turret. You're almost guaranteed to break his ammo rack. Yeah. Yeah. Why'd I say that? Now I'm going to hate playing the tank. Ugh. Sinlax. Oh, yeah. That reminds me. The Sinlax is still broken, you guys. I don't know when they're going to be fixing that, but I'm surprised it's still broken. Um, Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's about it. You know, I, I guess what I want to ask, and I hate to put this in a review... Would you guys like to see my best matches? Like, just, it doesn't matter what tanks I'm playing. If I'm recording and I get a good match, would you like me to go over it? Even if the video is only seven minutes long, five minutes long. Or would you like to see two matches in a row, back to back like that? And then just to give more of a variety, I'll explain my positioning on the maps. You know, I'll try and tell you what's going through my mind and things that are going on. Because to me, I've hit a wall and I, I feel like I've hit a wall. It's not like creator's block. It might be creator's block or just because of the, the fact that uh, absolute Muppetry. I, I guess Muppetry would be the best way to put it. But no, I, I just feel like I've, I've hit a wall. And I don't know what to do. So if you guys have any recommendations or if you want to see some of my best matches and you want me to do commentary over gameplay, I could do commentary over gameplay. Um, along with that, I do have a couple of ideas for content in the future, but I'm not going to share it because if I share it, that means I have to start working on it. And I honestly don't feel ready to work on it. But keep in mind, it's something that I know every single person needs to know about just because I already did it once with the IS-7. And that turned out really well. A lot of people liked it. And I don't mean likes on it itself. I mean, people who actually sent me messages on Xbox, Xbox, why Xbox? I got YouTube. But saying that it's helped them out a lot on that map specifically. So who knows later in the future, I could probably hit it up and team up with a couple of other guys to get some better editing, get some better layouts. But yeah, uh, other than that, I, I feel like I've kind of hit a wall a little bit. Other than that, the equipment on the T22 medium, we're going to be using improved ventilation, advanced optics and advanced loader combined with that. The crew, which, oh yeah, commander, they added it here. So weird. Skills. Yes. Born leader. Rapid loading. Run and gun. Steady aim. Snapshot. Situational awareness. Sixth sense. Track mechanic. And clutch braking. Uh, track mechanic. I recommend in all tanks. It does not matter what tank you're on. I, I recommend it. General mechanic is basically just a wasted perk by this point. So, yeah. there is Unless you're playing the mouse. If you're playing the mouse, the general mechanic is absolutely fantastic. Do it. But... I don't know who's playing the mouse. I, I do. I love the mouse. But, yeah. You know, it's getting content out. Getting stuff out. I, I just feel like, you know, doing a review of a tank, it, it's simple. It, it feels simple. I can go over it. I can read you guys the base statistics. And then I can straight up tell you how I feel about it. I can tell you what problems you're going to be experiencing inside of a tank. Because I, I have a rule. I have to invest at least 50 matches in a tank before I do a review on it. I have to make sure I play that tank for an entire day or an entire week before I even consider doing a review on it. And that's because I don't want to just be like every other content creator out there who stops and, you know, just plays two, three games and it records both matches and I'm just like, Yeah, guys, this is it. Ooh, yeah. That's my review. No, my reviews are, they're thought out. T22 medium, if you guys want to actually take the time out to gain the 450,000 free experience required to get this, or wait for the discounts to pop up for the tier 10 vehicles, um, rather than getting the T22 medium, the QL is still in the game. Honestly, I per prefer you to spend your credits on getting the QL or even the Object 260, or if you really want to, the 279E, because, well, they still haven't exactly fixed the ammo on that tank, and I'm pretty sure you guys don't know about this, but I'm, I'm going to share it. The 279E standard round only costs 130 credits. If you want to make some stupid amount of silver inside tier 10, take a 279E, 
load it with a crap load of standards, a crap load of high explosives, and maybe 10 premium rounds, because you're going to need those premium rounds. You're going to make an absolute stupid amount of silver. Combined with that, the IS-4 set up the same way. Okay, so 130, 130, and one, one of the tanks that makes me absolutely angry as an individual. Okay, and I've mentioned this multiple times on the forums. I've mentioned it to Mento, I've mentioned it to a couple of other guys. Look at the cost of these shells. 268 version 5, you, you're, you're hitting someone for 850 alpha and you're only paying 200 credits a shell. Dude, the profit you make from that? You think Terry premiums are good? <laughs> Grind out one of these tanks. Hey, look, they're all Russian. Superiority right here. Haha. <laughs> Can't beat it. <laughs> now I'm double checking. But that's the actual standard shell cost. And this one only does 320. 1100 per shell. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, this tank, it's more of a collector's item than to be competitive. I, w I don't see this doing too well inside comp. The CX-63 is out. There's also the Batch Hat 25 ton. So really later down the future, if you know this is if you want a Russian medium, the 907 in my opinion is going to outperform the T22 medium. But you know you you can make up your own minds on which ones you really want. But T22, it's not bad, and with the reload buff that I got, it's going to help out the tank quite a bit. Other than that, dude, if you guys want to see content with me just commentating over gameplay, uh, my thumbnails are going to look like crap if I do that. But hey, you know, getting content out, I guess. Uh, yeah yeah today's one of those days other than that dude it was nice having you guys here have a wonderful evening morning whatever time you're catching this if you like the video leave a like comment subscribe seriously leave a comment i really want to know your guys' opinion on everything else that i want to be doing in the future but mm, yeah the brain is smooth today i also have another question i redid a crap load of settings on my mic to see if i can make it sound better let me know how it sounds in the comments. That would also be highly appreciated. So, other than that, toodaloo. You guys have a fantastic day. See you on the battlefield. I'm gonna go bed.